Good evening, good evening, good evening, and welcome to The Real McCoy. I'm your host, Mephisto, and usually with me, my hetero life mate, Oh My Feelings. But today, we have got Jay. How are you doing, Jay? I'm good, thank you. How are you doing? What is The Real McCoy, you might ask? The Real McCoy is your weekly movie podcast where we ask you to go and watch a movie, watch it, come back to us, and we break it down for you. We spit it on around on the old comic book spin around. Oh, never mind. That never works. <laughs> never, ever works. Never, ever works. All right. We are out here in the uh, in the old production team, uh, aka me. Uh, we asked you to uh, go and watch the last Sean Connery Bond movie, and we of course didn't mean uh, what was it? Um, not live and let die, but there it's, was uh, you were no never say never again, isn't it? Though? Never say never again, which was no. never a Bond film canon, but we kind of meant the rock from 1996 and we'll get to that we'll get to that and before that i want to welcome back jay harang not harang you just harang correct uh and uh please jay tell us what you're doing because i i already know um well i um i do recaps of lifetime movies and the odd bit of soft porn uh and uh yeah um check out my channel if you and see if you like it yeah, and don't subscribe if you don't actually like the content. So just yeah, if you're not, if, if if like not going to watch it, don't subscribe. You exactly. will kill my channel. Thank you very exactly. much. Like I killed mine. Uh, I'm clawing back. back. I'm, I'm clawing back. I saw that. Yeah, you're doing very well at the moment. Good. Yeah, well, well I, dude, you're doing far better than I do. You're, sh you're. I told you this time and time again. Your shit is funny as hell. Uh, Thank I you. wish I could have like had more time to to do more but you know it it is what it is uh it's the thumbnail but another name uh we'll say hello to the chat paul harley how you doing my man good to see you good that's to see the guy who always beats around. me in the game he beats me in the game he's always he's pretty quick on the game uh paul paul hey I, I put paul as a mod but i i don't want him to do mod stuff i just want him to, his name to be highlighted so i can see him in the chat right <laughs> Fair uh, enough. he's a uh, he I like Paul because Paul's like a he's a fountain of knowledge, and B, if he doesn't know, he'll probably like 
super fast like google it and put it ah. on so i can correct myself because i make a ton of mistakes which right, is okay. you know it is it, it's all good what right. it is is what it is it is, it, <laughs> it is uh and we'll say hello to jillian how are you jillian welcome 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 to the chat now i'm clicking on the actual chat and not the thing <laughs> uh all right we asked you to uh watch the last bond movie with sean connery and we kind of meant the rock for a reason uh but it's uh jerry Bruckheimer, a don simpson production uh how many times have you managed to watch it this week jay uh two or three times <sighs> but, I, but I watched it two hours ago so uh yeah, yeah. that's pretty good because <laughs> yeah. what what happens is and this is what happens in every single week I forget the good stuff, like the one-liners. I know yeah. that they're there. I'd have completely forget the one-liners. And when we go through it, I like all that. And I get pissed on in WhatsApp. It's like, you dude, you forgot this. Uh we'll say hello to Becky as well. Hi, Becky. How are you? I much rather watch the movies you cover. Yes, I much rather watch the movies I cover too. Uh, even though we kind of covered a, a movie that I didn't really like, got a comment on it. The the guy was spot on with his take. However, it was a completely different take from my own, which was great because I said it this morning. I was like crashing and uh, crashing a different show. It's like give me the link. I was like give me the link. Give me the link. I have to set you straight. I got in because the guys were awesome. And the one important thing that I said was art is very subjective. You have to, to realize that a lot of these movies, we kind of argue about that this, this is crap. This is great. This is awesome. This is foul mouth and shit, right? Mm. Art is subjective and you might like something that I don't like. The take that I was like, I have to go in was Biodome is a great movie. Polly Shore is awesome. And I was like, the weasel. Yeah yeah no I, i'm not having that but i've been on a lot of streams recently where people have defended not only that film but paulie shaw as a comedian and i'm like i i'm str i struggle with that because because uh, you look at who it's aimed at it's aimed at our generation so we're the people that are supposed to have been like yeah paulie shaw's funny you just don't get it but i don't know anyone even back in the day who thought paulie shaw was funny who wanted I mean, to what the other one i mean his stand-up is is funny but his stand-up now like the last five six seven years if you hmm. if you heard it it's pretty good but it's um, not the weasel no uh, <laughs> that was a bad that was the dark days and when they're poorly <laughs> shaw's dark days you know they're bad all right to start us off correctly uh enough with the tomfoolery it's time yeah. to go deep it's time to go ham deep and we have a segment uh a segment that talks all about it it's called behind the screens Sound production, take two. I had to put that picture in. Behind the screens is where we go to me and where we talk about everything behind the scenes and production things and all that stuff. Jay, if you know anything about it, just jump in ahead. I'll, no I will if I do, yep, yeah, thank you. Uh, all right, the movie was a Don Simpson and Jerry Bruckheimer production. These guys used to be big producers of action movies. The more known one today is Jerry Bruckheimer because of other things that he's done and, you know, with the generations and all that stuff. People know Jerry Bruckheimer. Don Simpson, uh, this was his last movie. During the production, he kind of keeled over and died. Be <laughs> Let's just say this. He keeled over and died into a mountain of cocaine in his place because he was a massive addict uh and uh, they're easy mountains to trip over those so yes oh. uh, like nose first that's that's yeah. the problem <laughs> uh so the, the the movie is dedicated to him but that was kind of the last one and we talked about this when you talked about um con air that jerry Bruckheimer's next production was con air and he did it all by himself mm. um the movie actually started as a spec script do you know what a spec <coughs> script is i do not it's sort of um sort of a note script it's about tw it's i don't know 20 to 40 pages just to give an idea of what's going on 
uh so basic the basic 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 plot line of what's going on and it evolved from there the writers that did it were douglas cook and david weisberg and they were actually credited as the writers of the full script of course they wow. once it got picked up the spec gets picked up sort of like a pilot that gets picked up and yeah. evolved and of course that evolved into a full script however it was still a hodgepodge of a script. So they brought in some some writers that were uncredited. One of them is Aaron Sorkin, very well-known writer. Mm -hmm. uh, Jonathan, Jonathan Hensley, which wrote the bulk of, uh, uh, of the extra stuff. And one Quentin Tarantino for dialogue. So all right? the quippy dialogue, probably Tarantino. Probably Tarantino. Okay. But apart from that, because Sean Connery was brought in, uh, he got an executive producer uh, bit in the movie because they wanted him in. He said, I'll do it, but I'll do it, you know. Some actors, ju like Jack Nicholson, like big-time actors, get, like, an executive producer on the movie to get the gross stuff later on. And that's how he got his pay. Yeah, He got a couple of writers on the uh, on the movie to write his personal dialogue in the movie. So basically rewrites of the dialogue just to make sure he's got like good stuff in there. Um, Tony Scott, uh, the brother of Ridley Scott was supposed to be the director. He was uh, first choice for the director, but he preferred to do a little small movie called The Fan with Wesley Snipes and Robert De Niro. I love that. I love that film. Uh, and... Uh, and of course, the next target is the guy that Brookheimer and Don Simpson worked with before, which was uh, Michael Bay, who did Bad Boys. Both collaborations, like, oh, we did well with this guy. Let's have him again. Yeah. There was a lot of backlash from the Disney executives. Now, the film itself is from a company. I, I think it's Hollywood. I can check for a second. It's called Hollywood something. Hollywood Productions, something like, you know, uh, one of those companies like Touchstone Pictures. There was like, this is Disney, but because this is R-rated and not for kids and not, we don't want it on our Disney wholesome family brand because it used to be one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I so remember those days. A different company, so it doesn't say Disney on it. So yeah, one yeah. of those companies. Um, they, the Disney execs did not like Michael Bay at all. Like, at all, at all. And they always no. clashed with him. And they had a little bit of, a, like, problems with the budget because Michael Bay loves to blow shit up. Yeah. So they had a little bit of an over budget on this one. Uh, so uh, Sean Connery had to go with Bay to the offices to, like, don't, don't worry. Bay is doing a good job. Trust me. I'm executive producer on this movie. That got sorted immediately. Nice. Before that, Michael Bay, because he wanted to shoot in San Francisco streets, San Francisco then is the same as San Francisco now. You need permits. You need to keep in with noise, with neighbors, all that stuff, all the chasing scenes, all the blowing of the carts, all of that had to be permitted. You know, everything had to go through City Hall. And it took a lot of time, and it just stretched the budget and stretched the shooting days. I mean, if you live in if you live in central San Francisco, certainly on those streets, you must have to like the roads blocked every week because it, around the nineties. Because if you, I mean, I remember a load of them now. I'm just thinking like Metro, uh, the Presidio again, Sean Connery, all these um, all these films that are just got, <laughs> constantly sh showing you know the downhill with the trams. I think big was big trouble in Little China, San Francisco. Uh. Yes, I but I was. don't remember they they had any chase scenes. No, they didn't have chasing them, but they, but they did have. Just some think fun. about it; it's basically the same street over Every and over time. again, like in Bullet. By the way, same street as in uh, Vertigo. In Vertigo, there's a shot where he goes downhill. It's that's same, right. Same street. Foul same play. Street foul play with Chevy Chase. I think that's one. I think so. Seventies uh, though, so they'd they'd have a twenty year break between that and The Rock. Yeah, yeah, but generally speaking, that that part of the city is one small part and they always shoot the same car chases where they go like buncing around right yeah all that kind of stretches the extra 
strain. And there was one point where Michael Bay literally quit. Literally quit the movie at at a <laughs> at a risk of actually being lost, like getting a lawsuit for sixty million dollars. Cause that's what they shot at that point. So right, if he okay. quit, yeah, he would have been on him. Of course, they all they sorted it out and all, all was well. Now, Connery, besides the writers and having pull to bring back Bay, had a, an, another request. He had to have a cabin set up in Alcatraz. Right. Because they shot a bunch of it in Alcatraz itself. Yeah. To stay overnight a few nights that they were there because he didn't want to go back and forth to the mainland. No reason. He didn't say any reason. He just thought it was a waste. Not like the bloke from Jaws just doesn't like I'm assuming Sean Connery hasn't got a problem with water or a lot of his no. films wouldn't have been made. No. Uh, I, I don't think so. I, no. I think they even shot every, like all the stuff that was underwater was in the pool. Uh, by the way, the the day Michael Bay quit was because there's a, there's the shot where the seals go into the water and go into the drain and come up with the uh, with the motor stuff. The Disney execs didn't want to give him the money to ha to uh, rent those water that the water skis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The underwater. that's why he quit. Right. Um, another one, by the way, just just remembered uh, the fan, the film we were just talking about earlier, also yeah. has uh, clips from San Francisco. Yep, I think uh, Snipes is like a San Francisco Giants baseball He's... baseball player. He certainly is. Yep. Yeah. So casting, I didn't find a lot of stuff on the casting, but one thing was. Uh, was uh really funny stanley goodspeed before he was named stanley goodspeed that character was first offered to arnold schwarzenegger why because it's an action movie with a lot of explosions however schwarzenegger read the sort of like the pre 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 not the spec script but a very early script and he thought yeah. the movie was dog shit which okay. it was at the time All before right. the rewrites and he passed on it cage got into this because he wanted to work with sean connery specifically with sean connery because sean connery uh was added in very early on um but he was known for he was the last like leaving las vegas guy well, see, right. the, I, I think he was the Raising Arizona guy until the mid-90s, wasn't he? he? Kind of, yeah. He always did these bit parts in these wacky movies. Uh, there's, a, there's a movie that everybody forgot that I saw way back, like when I was way too early to watch it. It's called Zandalee. Oh, it's a lot that, of yeah. sex yeah. and, and, yeah, yeah. and trail and all that stuff. Very, very sexy, erotic movie. He was known as doing those kind of parts. I'd like to I'd like to touch back on Schwarzenegger playing the Nicolas Cage part. Go ahead. How, how would you see that going in there? So let's pretend it was it was the script as it as it was when it was finished. How do you see how do you see Arnold Schwarzenegger as the chemical weapons specialist? Yeah, he wasn't a chemical spe a chemical weapons specialist when the when the script was. You know, I bet I bet he wasn't. But if no. if you put Schwarzenegger in as like the guy who like you know FBI's leading most you know. Yeah, yeah just he's can't like see the it, FBI can you? agent that just tags along with the SEAL team because he was the most badass FBI. I, yeah, agent. and that would that would have ruined it. So yeah, I'm glad that didn't happen. Um, so but the Cage, one some of the one liners there at the end would have worked well with with Schwarzenegger. Yeah, uh, actually, Cage, even though he had lines, he ad libbed a lot of the lines. He was the one that came up with the fact that Stanley isn't really swearing. Okay. He's like, there's a moment where he says, like, uh, Zeus's butthole. That's right, yeah. And there's a moment right at the very end when he, where he said asshole, which was, that's the worst that he said. All the other words he kind of replaced, and he even when he was, like, completely mad, it wasn't that bad. And there also, is, I'm, the I'm, cage I'm, mannerisms yeah. that we know today were toned down a lot. A lot. He was yeah. supposed to be this timid chemical weapon specialist that he was he works well under pressure, but in a lab situation rather than just being shot at. Uh, but, yeah, he came up with a lot of his uh, mannerisms. A lot of the lines were ad libbed. Um, 
the fact that he's like a beetle maniac, all cage. Uh, right, the fact okay. that he was like playing around like half naked, that was all cage. It's like a suggestion to Michael Bay, and Bay said, "Well, fine, that works. Go ahead." Um, there was a, cu- a couple of moments in the film that really don't work for me, but I'm sure we'll, we'll get onto those we'll, as, uh, we'll get, as we'll get as we... them. I, I just want to finish up a few yeah. more things. Uh, Hummel, uh, uh, General Hummel, was modeled after a guy called Colonel David H. Uh, Hackworth. Was a real guy who uh, oh. kind of talked about those the soldiers in Vietnam specifically that went into like these black black ops situations didn't come back and their families didn't really get the real story not mm-hmm. really the compensation part but the real story about how they died um Michael Bean uh was playing basically the same part that he did in The Terminator and in Aliens yeah. a special ops guy that was sent to deal with a situation uh and managed to get dead at the end yeah um some of most of the seal team were actually seal team guys they were not actors the ones that went the ones that breached the the island yeah the ones yeah. that breached not the the guy who not was the tagged along yeah the guy who was tagged along to uh to sean connors to john mason that's yeah. that's an actor Fine. So, uh, it's like a latino actor he's, but he's done a lot of like different small roles yeah uh the premiere was in Alcatraz. Like I said, the sh- they shot in Alcatraz while Ac- Alcatraz was open to the public. So on one side, they shot the movie. On the other side, they were still doing those tours. Nice. Um, Dwayne Johnson made his first appearance as The Rock after the movie came out in 1997. Yeah. The movie came out in 1996. Had nothing to do with it. I, I saw somewhere that it said, I don't believe it, that he's never seen The Rock before he came up with his name. Right. Don't believe it, but I don't think it's the inspiration for the for the name. I used to have a friend, uh, well, not a friend, he was a friend of a friend who had, a, had the nickname The Rock before The Rock, but his was because he used to smoke crack. That's not a, <laughs> that's, that's not a joke. That is, that's, honest, that's honestly true. So. They were like, oh, my mate, The Rock. I was like, why do they call him The Rock? Is he really hard or something? And they were like, no, he just smokes crack. I was like, wow. Is this who we're hanging around with now? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Uh, and, of course, there's the main theory, as I mentioned, that John Mason is James Bond. We'll get to that when we get to that. Yeah. One last thing. There's a major, major, major flaw in the movie, in the movie's plot logic. If Alcatraz is closed to the public is or close to being a prison, why are the boilers still running? I was going to ask you that later, but yeah, that's good. I was wondering why we'll there were flames. Yeah, but they said it's a steam engine, so maybe that's powering the heating or something. Why is it supposed to be heating while there's just tours there? Because you would well when you because it might because San Francisco gets extremely cold and on that certainly yes. I've been there and when I've been to Alcatraz and I remember like the, the the high winds like I mean it does get freezing cold so maybe inside and I doubt it was insulated particularly well because when it was built yeah uh, so I'm assuming so that Michael that's Bay's statement about that oh shucks screw it it's entertaining don't you think <laughs> yeah yeah fair enough that's yeah quote uh by Mr Michael Bay it's like yeah. I I saw that quote and I was like, that's perfect. <laughs> that's pretty fucking perfect. Yeah, it is. All right, yeah. Jay. We're going to jump in straight into our first game of the day. You know what it's called. It is called Missing Marquee. <laughs> Missing Marquee is where we take 10 posters, have their text written off. We display them and Mr. J and the chat will have to guess which movie this is. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Oh, God, this superhero business. Uh, who is that? That is Angelina Jolie. Oh, and salt covered. Chat, chat will help you out. Oh. If you don't know. It's not a really good movie. Is it well, not? It's not a good movie. Oh, wow. It's, uh, it's a... Danish folklore. Oh God, I, I don't. I, no, I have no idea. 
Um, I thought uh, be- Behemoth. Not Behemoth. <laughs> Close, though. That's Swedish anyway, isn't it? Or Norwegian? Uh, just got an ad? What? Oh, sorry. It's it's not Behemoth. It's Beowulf. Sorry, he's written Beowulf. it in. Beowulf. Paul Hart got that. Sorry, not me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, that's uh, Capote. Capote is correct. That looks like... Um, Oh, what's it called? Twelve monkeys? What? No, it's not. It's uh, nope. um, uh, machete. Machete. Uh, can you pull out of that? Is that Metropolis? That is Metropolis, correct? No. They can't pull out. Just pull oh, in. that's fucking one of these ones like the mechanic or the stopper or the the butcher. No. Or, is that Jason Statham? That's not Jason Statham. Oh, that is, is that Bruce Willis? Bruce Willis. Right. That is that um surrogates. That is surrogates yeah. correct. Uh, right. Is that Logan's run? No, that is not Logan's run. That is some sort of alien in a tube. Uh, is it? Not really. Oh. But yes. It's a man in a tube. Oh, no, I, oh, I don't know. Come on, come on, Paul. A man in out. a tube is a movie that was shot in London for a, a grand. <laughs> Are you serious? What, this one? This one is? No, I've got something called. Oh, the mouth. Oh, sorry, very good. But sorry, I was. Tube. Yeah, got. I was lost there. Sorry, you beat, you beat me. <laughs> got me. So it's gone straight over my head. Um, uh, I think. I think the chat is stomped as well. This hang on, hang on. There's called... a delay on it. Paul might get it. Ah, uh, no, no, I don't think. All right, okay. Get it. This one is called the Andromeda Strain. Oh, I do know what that film is, but I'd never have got that from that. Right, that is. Um, that's something like the Post or the. Nope. No, it's not. Uh, can you make it bigger a bit? That's Ryan Reynolds. Oh, uh, shit. Well, well, that's The Devil Wears Prada, but we'll come to that later. Yeah, we'll go back to that. Uh, yeah, that, is that... Boba Fett's got it. The oh, well done. Good job. Oh, God, I've seen that as well. Movie. So this is Devil Wears Prada. Yeah. Oh, that's The Expendables 1 the or 2 or 3. Expendables <laughs> is correct. Titanic. Titanic. And that kind of brings us to the end. That's pretty nice. good, man. Good pretty collection, good. that. Oh, hang on. Someone said my, it was Big Short, was it? Definitely. It was Big Short. Yeah, yeah that's right. Margin Calls. It. Someone's put Margin Calls. Margin Calls the one with Penn Badgley, isn't it? Isn't it? As opposed to uh, came around at the same time. I don't remember then. I, I, yeah, I, I think it did. Margin yeah. Call. I know of that movie, but and I, it deals with the same subject, but on a different yeah. angle. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, the Big Short, if you haven't seen it, guys, watch it. It's fucking... Fu- it, it will boil your blood. How annoying that that whole era was. Yeah, like, for real. These All people right. complaining when they borrowed too much money that they can't pay back. Come on. Uh, it's a <laughs> lot more complicated than that. Yeah, I know. A lot more complicated than that. All right, cool. So, General Hummel uh, is very distraught. There's a. I I totally forgot this whole start intro. This whole intro scene was a lot longer than i remember like a lot a lot longer i remember the the sort of the break in but the whole uh, there's the start credits while they it kind of goes over what hummel is going through the fact that he just lost his wife meaning he's like lost all tethers into reality yep so it kind of gives him the yeah now i can, now i can do this tre- treacherous thing and you know, bring this to light because I know there's no end game. Uh, but it, it doesn't set it up just yet. It just sets up the fact that he is, he's got nothing left to lose. So he yeah. just go, goes at it. And of course he uses his rank to, to get into this base and the base has V X gas. Supposedly, America doesn't have VX gas. Right. Just the bad guys do. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> uh, to me, it's kind of kind of harkens back to uh, weapons of mass destruction. Uh, do you remember that uh, that speech back in the day before the Second Iraq War? I do not remember the speech. Uh, no, I, I remember it vividly. But yeah, it, it says. Um, them breaking into this uh, VX rocket kind of facility. 
taking they t they took rockets and they took no they took 16 rockets and a few of these vx st uh, st i think they took 16 and 16 but Can't then remember. they had a little bit of an accident going out that's right uh, yeah. i have to uh of course uh and this whole accident bit is just to show us how deadly vx can be uh just one it's so hard yeah we'll do it we'll do it like this this is the pg version of it this is the pg version of it he goes uh let's say his his face is melting now it's a bit like robocop bloke when he falls into the waste isn't it yeah, yeah. what so they they drop one of the balls uh on the ground it kind of melts and it it it's it's it does what a, a, I hate to say it, it does what a, a normal VX container should do, which is it's very oily kind of substance, but then it evaporates really quickly. That's what it's supposed to do. But it doesn't melt your face. Okay. And you pr you're probably dead by about twenty seconds in because it's a nerve gas. What it does, it just shuts your nervous system, and you just suffocate and die. It doesn't really melt your face. Not VX. VX is just faster than all of them. Right. Um, the the one that melts your face is mostly mustard gas, but it's not okay. really about. Mu I know way too much about this stuff. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say that's uh, yeah, it's probably too much don't information. Ask, don't ask, don't tell. But yeah. I was in combat engineering, and I know all about this stuff. Yeah, yeah. it's fucking horrible. Yeah, I'm sure uh, it is. It's it's a. Let's just say they wanted to make this scene just to make sure everybody knows what the threat is of this V because you say, well, this is just kills people. It's very, you know, it, it's not tangible. When you see a person die from it, it's like, oh shit, that's what's going to happen to 70,000, 80,000. They, let's they drop numbers. Like, like it's yeah. nothing. If that rocket would have dropped in that middle of the football stadium, that's the football stadium and eight to nine to 10 blocks. Yeah. And you never know with the wind. It could be even like more because it's a deadly, deadly stuff. Um, but then, so we got introduced to Hummel. We got introduced to the threat. Now we need to get introduced to the heroes. And it starts with uh, getting introduced to... Uh, to Mr. Uh, Mr. Stanley Goodspeed here, as he frantically tries to defuse a bomb while fighting sarin gas, which does not melt your suits. Okay, sarin gas is works the same as VX gas. It's okay. Just a this is turning gas. into a lesson about chemical weapons more than it is a critique of a film. Okay. <laughs> what? What we want to know from this scene is, yeah. first of all, I like that there's, there's, and it's throughout the movie, there are multiple scenes where there's pressure on the audience. There's a lot of drama, whether it's like a car chase, whether it's uh, fighting gas or, or like diffusing rockets, there's always drama, there's always tension, and there's always people on the edge of their seats. And this is what Michael Bay loves to do. He does that in every movie that he does. But this is like the, the origins. Because this is like the second movie he's done. First one being Bad Boys. Right. In Bad Boys, you don't have constant pressure. Here, there's always pressure. You're always on the edge of your seat. Yeah, there is a real, like, and the, the fact that it's a chemical weapon just adds, adds more to it. It adds so much more to it, I think, than uh, than if it was just the threat of like like there are times when well we'll get onto it later, but it is it adds an extra an extra thing. Yeah, and here it's not only just the poison and and uh, and the the gas itself. It's actually where he's like, oh, this is plus C four, so we're gonna be like destroyed over here. They close yeah. everything down. They evacuate all the people. And there's literally two science scientists inside the cage and two scientists outside the cage. And that's it. And what we see here is, yeah, Stanley Goodspeed is, uh, is a scientist. It's a, basically a, a chemical warfare expert. But he is 
uh, he works well under pressure. And he even says it later on when they're kind of scuttling through the uh, the um, the sewers in Alcatraz that, yeah, it's like, yeah, this is pressure. I like doing pressure. And they just keep going. Yeah. And now we've got the the actual takeover. So I like the fact that Hummel goes in while there's a tour. And he goes to the tour guide and is like, all right, tour's over. Everybody in their cages. Nobody gets out. And everybody's yeah. already in the cages because of how the tour works. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, okay, time to go. The thing is, Ed Harris... Uh, when they shot it, when they actually sh went to shoot the thing, the tour guide cracked him up. Right. And he couldn't do it. It took a few takes before he can actually do the thing because the the actual, the actual actor who do, did the tour guide cracked him up. And right. Ed Harris is not the guy who cracks up easily. And it what it, what happens is there's a cascading effect where you're more the most serious actor gets cracked up Everybody gets cracked up and nobody gets anything done, which is great unless you have Disney kind of bearing down on you to yeah. finish up this movie for, yeah, for a deadline. Um, so we've got Hummel coming in, issuing a threat, and we've got all these people underneath. We got well, first of all, we need to touch on when Ed Harris uh, is the exposition that goes on when Hummel uh, <laughs> talks to his team. I think that's okay. before this so it is it is absolutely so he's already assembled this team and he's already got them all together and then he tells them all who they are then he tells them why why they're doing it and he explains uh, absolutely everything in the plan in literally 90 seconds he just sets the whole plot for the film out so he even yeah. points out which ones are marines and which ones are mercenaries and how he knows everyone in the team and then he goes and we've all agreed that we're going to be doing this we're going to be doing this and then they're going to be doing that and like, there's, there's no way that that conversation wouldn't have happened months before they started this, you know what I mean? But it's just brilliant. And then, so coming back to what you were saying about when they have the meeting after they've issued the threat, there's more of it there. It is, it is outstanding because it's just so quick. Yeah, that's the, and that's the issue because, and this is where the script, if you look at this, like if you're not on the edge of your seat and just enjoying the movie and not thinking about, oh, didn't he just say it? Yeah. Did he what did he say it again? But we already know this. The fact that he's like calling the guys uh, in the White House or not the White House, the sort of the, the people who actually yeah. run the White House. So yeah. The chiefs of staff, the FBI director, all that yeah. stuff. And the, the the guy who represents the president, which is the like the head of staff. Yeah. Like, okay, who is this? What are you doing? What do you want? And he gives them his the give they give the, the list of demands. It's like, yes, but we know this. Couldn't you just <laughs> say it, like not talk to your men? And it's just to give us the lowdown on who are the, the makeup of his team. So yeah. I, like you said, I know this, 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 and that. I don't know you two, but I've heard good things. And we I just, mean, he should really have known them for quite a while before, before deciding to embark on a mission like this, but you know. Yeah, and the fact that there are some people he knows, like current, like uh, Al Major Kramer, right. who was like the head army guy. Yeah. And oh, okay. what we don't know about Hummel, when he hangs up, he tells everybody in the room, all the important people, he tells them who Hummel is. Yeah. But Hummel already said it when he <laughs> talked to his men. <laughs> a, yeah. a double... <laughs> It's, it's so that you could, because obviously they're, they're, they're some, I think they know these Michael Bay type films are very good at this. It's like you don't have to be fully engaged. Like, you know, you can go for a piss at the cinema and walk back in and you'll, you, you won't miss anything because it'll be explained to you again. It, and they really don't want it to be hard work at all. And it's not hard work. Well, I, was, want... I watched this at the cinema. I was glued to it every second right from the start. You know what? I watched it too. And I watched yeah. it with like my mate my yeah, best same. mate at the time and we were like this is fucking awesome yeah. <laughs> and we both were like and we're both like cinephiles at 16 right and we love to go and watch stuff like i, I didn't watch pulp fiction with him but 
uh, like stuff like Pulp Fiction or Big Lebowski or like drama stuff. Yeah. And we like the action stuff. And we we regularly went to do like a double feature. So the main movie, usually action movie, yeah. then went to like a like a midnight showing of a like a film film, like a drama or whatever. Yeah. This was like balls to the wall. And then later on we saw like take your pick what was on in 1996 at the same time. Yeah. We went to see that. So we knew we knew Cage as this art house guy and now he's in this action movie and we're like we love this guy why haven't we seen them in this role before yeah well i don't, I don't even like action films like i mean I, at all i've never i've never been into them I, I find them quite but this one this one i think this one's so good and there's a couple others similar like con air as well i absolutely love con air but i'm not i'm not someone that can sit through a um you know a load of car chases or fight scenes but this was so good because there's always there's always like something going on behind it yeah, yeah, and just just like Pop said, hey Pops, clearly this was more than just about popcorn entertainment. The story without uh, a story without loopholes. It's yeah, a Michael this is, Bay. This is about popcorn entertainment. That's what he yeah, said. Yeah, exactly. It's all about like, and it Michael Bay is all about that. It's like just I want just want entertainment. Yeah, I watched this scene. now. This scene here, I've got on it. Here's my issue. Why is he being so weird during the sex? I, I don't know. It's because it's really uncomfortable to watch. Now, I watched it Friday with my children. I allowed them to watch because I knew there weren't any like real stuff. Yeah, you don't see any lips He's or anything. So. fully dressed. Now, yeah. at this point, my boy who's 10 years old was like, Daddy, I'm tired. I want to go. It's like, the good parts haven't started yet. Right. And you're going. So hang on. He watched the sex. Hey, hang on. He, he was 10 years old. He'd watched the sex scene and said, I'm tired. I'm going to bed. He's not tired. No. <laughs> he he went to bed just before this. I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> My daughter's already 13. She's yeah. fine. It's not a big deal. Yeah. She, the, the girl, like Carla, got up from him. And the one thing that was in my mind is like, how the fuck did she ha they they have sex? She has underwear on. Yeah. Now she has underwear on because they didn't want to make it an X. They yeah, wanted yeah. to have it like an R for the gore, not gore, but blood and 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 in violence. We just got to assume he pulled it to the side. I, I mean, I don't. I'm sure this isn't the main focus of the film, but that's what I would have assumed. I mean, my daughter was like, "How's they? How are they having sex? She's wearing all the clothes." It's right. Like, it's a movie. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> like, don't yeah. think about it too much. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that, that isn't the main point of the movie. I just, yeah, I just, I, I can't see any woman thinking that what what was going on, what the sort of stuff he was saying was in any way sexy, and how she wouldn't have dried up like Sahara. Oh yeah, especially when he was like, "Don't answer the phone," and he yeah. answers the phone. Yeah. yeah. Like, you can hear the tumbleweed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but the whole. The whole there's a couple of scenes with him, so he was like uh, strumming naked, and then we have this scene. It's just setting up the fact that she really wants to be with him. Mm. She's carrying, she's carrying his child, his future child, and he intends to marry her. Yeah. So, sort of like she, it's not just a girlfriend thing. She's my fiance, which just it, it kind of ups the ante uh, at this point. It's like she's not, she's almost my wife. So when she comes to San Francisco later on, it's just upping his own vested interest in actually making this thing happen. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, everybody kind of realizes, well, they're in Alcatraz. We want to send a SEAL team. That's our, like, that's the secondary option, right? The first option is to blow the shit up. With the thermite, which it's already experimental at this point. Second option is sending a SEAL team. The thermite isn't ready, so we're going to send the, the SEAL team. We need a way in. They know the way in is through one point, but they don't know how to manage the sewers. So <laughs> the option is John Mason. Yeah. Calling up John Mason, which is ridiculous. But it is what it is. It's it like, makes the film what it, it is. It makes is. the film happen. It's yeah. a reason for him to go. And the, we've got this guy. Now, 
I don't know. I like I like uh, Sean Connery with long hair. I do. I mean, I don't. Uh, but... Have you seen uh, Medicine Man? Yeah. It, he's rocking the the long. Hair. It's a toupee, but he's, he's rocking it. I, but he, I, a, a good looking a good looking guy can pull off long hair. Like a good looking guy can pull off a shaved head. It's yeah. like Sean Connery is obviously really good looking, and like so he can get away. He can have whatever. So I think the only sort of hair he couldn't have would be that sort of early 70s like slanted at the top with like <laughs> long at the sides and then like a bit of a mullet out the back that's just shocking really small at the front long at the nobody looks good with that but the most important thing is they bring him into this interrogation room and nobody can crack him not even the like the deputy director of san francisco whatever it was yeah um the guy who is like high up but he doesn't know who he's not high enough to know who john mason really is yeah, yeah. And Womack, the director of the FBI, doesn't really give him any information. Well, well that when he first, when they step out of the room, yeah. all the information comes out. That's the second point of exposition. Well, one of them goes, we can't let Mason out. And then the other, because well, they obviously did at this point know who he was. But then Womack just tells him his fucking whole life story. Yeah. And what a surprise that they can't crack him. Because they should have known they can't crack him. Because he's been in prison this whole time because he won't give up the secrets. So it's not yeah. like they're going to get him into a room and say, oh, by the way, what are the secrets? And he's going to go, oh, all right then. You've got to assume yeah. they'd have tried everything. But anyway, sorry, go on. No, 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 I was going to say, he, he kept the secret of Kennedy's real assassination <laughs> for 30 years. But yeah. now we're going to crack him. Now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I love the fact that the deputy director of the FBI kind of flings a fucking, you know, a coin at him. He's like, yeah. You know he's an escaped artist, and yeah. you're giving him a metal object that he can use. Yeah. So what if he's tied? Brilliant and when he gets they to put it. in. Of course, they put in Stanley Goodspeed, where you, it's like he is not an interrogation specialist. He's not basically not an even an FBI agent. Yeah. You put him in this with a clearly a guy who was well trained in combat. And not talking, but Stanley's gonna crack him, and he's just waltzing in. Just sign here, dude. It's it's no problem. <laughs> and even um, he comes in. It's like my name is Stanley Goodspeed. It's like, of course you are. <laughs> now this is the first point where the theory about James Bond comes in, right? In Diamonds Are Forever the last official movie that has James Bond as uh, Sean Connery as James Bond. Yeah. Uh, uh, Miss Plenty O'Toole comes into him and he's like, uh, oh, I'm I'm plenty. Of course you are. Yeah, yeah. Same intonation. I checked it today. It's fucking funny. Yeah. It's so good. By the way, uh, there is a video. There's a 20 minute video I watched. I don't remember the name of the guy. I wanted to give him credit. I will in the description down below once the show ends. He breaks down all the theory into timelines and it really fits on the whole James Bond thing. We'll touch upon that later because we're already about an hour in and we're on like the second scene. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. All right, so Stanley comes in. He signs in the thing. The coin comes into play as Mason kind of picks it up. Stanley already kind of said to them, well, release him just so he can sign. I would never give him a fucking pen to sign. Nope. That's the second mistake. And then he kind of cuts away the glass, puts in, and then we have that sort of, oh, he knows Womack is on the case because Womack basically was in charge or was a part of him being stepped away. They yeah. have a deal where it's like, okay, I want a suit. I want to be in a suit, and I want to be in a hotel. Why? Because he's fucking James Bond, and he needs to be in a fucking suit. That's yeah. why. Okay. Uh, and they take him on, and one of the funniest things ever is they bring in this. The this, gay hairdresser. <laughs> the gay hairdresser. Yeah. Like, you can't escape it. He's a gay yeah. hairdresser. <laughs> I mean, th this stereotype is is outrageous. I mean, this is his unbelievable negative stereotype in this. It's so good. It, the the guy's like, okay, can we have like a moisturizer? Or something? <laughs> no. and he's like, can oh. I get a sea salt rinse and some color? And it's like, no. <laughs> 
Uh, no scissors, please. Only. <laughs> oh my God, no scissors. But, <laughs> Jesus. Well, and what does he compare it to? Would you ask Leonardo to paint without paintbrushes? Yeah. Wow. He is the most stereotypical gay hairdresser they could find. He's the most stereotypical gay in film since the <laughs> yeah. police academy at the Blue Oyster Bar. Oh. God. Even though that was a terrible stereotype, because I don't remember that ever being a stereotype about aggressive bikers with handlebar moustaches. But whatever, that's for an that's for another time. Of of course, you've never heard one song of Judas Priest ever in your life. Oh well, but, yeah, okay. fair enough. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the the fact that uh, well, John Mason, what happens is while this is going on, he's has a rope ready. He's ready to you know drop Womack at the at, at the drop of a hat. That's why he wants the, you know, the haircut because it kind of confuses the whole thing. That's what that's what he said. Yeah. Brilliant. Exactly. Thank you, Michael yeah. Myers. <laughs> and please don't kill me. Hello, Michael Myers. How are you doing? Yes. Uh, and this facilitates the whole escape. Now, I want to get to a certain point and then we'll move on to uh, the scene with his, with his daughter is. Where is it? Uh, we'll we'll leave it th this. So, <laughs> when they shot this at the hotel, it is the actual hotel, right? Okay? Uh, is it the Fairbanks? I think Fair oh, Fairmont. Fairmont. Sorry. Oh. They didn't warn anybody at the hotel, so a lot of guests and a lot of people from like downstairs looking at the hotel called the police. <laughs> to tell them there's a man hanging out of the hotel it's the stunt guy who did yeah. the stunt uh and there's a lot of commotion <laughs> that they need to investigate so uh yeah they got the production shut down for about half a day <laughs> brilliant yeah so that's that that uh, makes sense though because i mean you can't warn everyone can you you can't yeah. warn so you can't just you can't just dangle a bloke off off the edge of a building in in the middle of a mega city and you can't just write on all because you could see that from for miles so yes. who are they supposed to tell I mean, this is it, it was like on the i don't know 15th floor or whatever it was i mean they could have told the police and said by the way if you get any calls about this just tell them it's a stuntman but then what if someone conveniently at the same time had decided to throw their mate off the side of a building <laughs> yeah they wouldn't like, have been able to respond there's an actual guy hanging from <laughs> Oh, there we were thinking it was the film. So, I mean, so. Uh, and of course, it leads to John Mason escape. He uh, takes a Humvee, which I, I love the fact that, and it's it's a very Michael Bay thing because it's it's his humor. While right. there's a car chase, you have a call from the guy who like you stole the Humvee from, and it's like a German bloke. <laughs> like, oh, the Humvee, and he's like, "What?" Because what? because like, foreigners. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I, "I didn't take your Humvee. I borrowed it." <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. You borrowed, and, and all this leads to. It's basically trying to tell you what is sort of what are John Mason's stakes in this whole thing. Because yeah. he does have a daughter that does li live in, in San Francisco. And when he finds out, it's sort of like when he goes to leave, he kind of figures out, oh, well, the the threat is they're going to kind of destroy, not destroy, but harm San Francisco and my daughter is there. So that's kind of John Mason's stakes in all this. Not because he wants to help the FBI or Warmack. Yeah. He doesn't care. He really doesn't give a fuck at all. I don't think he give, gave a fuck at all about the whole thing, apart from the fact that his daughter is in San Francisco. And that's yeah. his stakes in the, in this. That's his kind of like motivation to help out the real one, not the fake one. Yeah. But it does, uh, there is that moment where uh, Goodspeed and, and Mason kind of talk. And Goodspeed basically does him a favor for giving him that chance to talk to his daughter. Yeah. Before they kind of circle back, because Andy doesn't tell Andy doesn't tell her that he could have easily told her that he escaped, but didn't. Yeah. Really. 
Yeah. He does him a solid, but she kind of yeah. figures out that he escaped once yeah. the police comes in and that like because even and, when he pulls his badge, she's like, "Is that right?" <laughs> yeah. It, so, so to think your dad is such a liar that that she then has to question that an FBI agent is also lying to her to to uh, to bolster his story. <laughs> yeah, must be it, quite bad. And and this is where the kind of like like we said the hodgepodginess thing of the script that stuff didn't quite lines up because it on the split second it kind of turns into oh he's gonna say he's gonna save face but then it really doesn't happen because everybody's yeah. kind of pointing the gun at him yeah exactly and, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's not really gonna work yeah ignore the sirens i'm just helping out a friend uh all right so uh we got the seal team coming in and uh, uh there's an exchange with womack back in the base sort of like they're looking at the blueprints and it's like okay let me know where to get in because you know the place and then they figure out well my my map is right here in the, my brain yeah. i have to go with you yeah, yeah and then stanley goodspeed kind of realizes oh shit, i have to go with you too <laughs> I can't really explain how to diffuse a VX rocket. Yeah. And he, and there's an exchange where Mason is like, "Have you you've never done combat?" No, no, no. I'm I, I'm a counter terrorist. Of course <laughs> I am. And Mason kind of figures out, "No, you're not. No, you're not." But he doesn't say so. He doesn't say so. So they have the choppers coming in. Two choppers with one split out kind of fake the funk on on hummel because they have rudiment basically rudimentary uh radar they go under the radar drop in with all the uh special equipment and going to the drain and uh yeah at, at this point at this point it was like mason knew he's he's dealing with an amateur when he yeah. fucked up with his uh with his regulator it's like yeah that's yeah, yeah. You're not a counterterrorism guy. Um, and it seems like everything is going well until, and this is, uh, we kind of harken back to when the guys, when the uh, the Marines come in and Hendrix, Captain Hendrix, was having that, uh, that um, uh, detector, that extra detector that, that nobody Motion knows sensor. about, that is yeah. like cutting edge. It has both lasers and physical things. And this is a like an obvious setup because you would think the SEAL team with all the like fiber optics and the way to, you know, oh, we know this is here, so we've neutralized this. And of course they didn't because it's high tech. And this, of course the SEAL team doesn't know anything about it. Yeah, of course. And they go in and they have this uh i think they call it a shower room i said right? it's a shower room yeah the shower room standoff yeah and this is one of the most intense scene in the entire movie by the way this was when i f saw this for the very first time i felt i felt for the seal team like yeah. it's it's a really horrible death but i was i was also like just put your guns down there's no there's, there's no way out of this yeah, I but but also also that so we got I got to bring this up. So good. I, I mean, so look, who's I mean, like it's not an easy one to say that uh, General Hummel is the baddie in this, is it? Because no, it's I, in fact you can't work out who the true baddie is. The only the only person who I think is are the true baddies are the three um, are the three guys. The I think it's you know Larry from Candyman, Larry yeah, the, the Candy health Man. inspector from Friends, and the other little black guy. Those three, the, I mean, the candy man especially, he just, he doesn't seem to care about anything. He just wants to sh shove the rockets over there, doesn't he? Uh, the He's sergeant, like, when are we putting the rockets? When are we sending the rockets? Actually, I think the sergeant wasn't really a, he was from Hummel's crew, like crew crew from Desert Storm. What, um, Larry, the, was, Larry the health inspector? No, 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 the, the sergeant, the, bla the black dude who was the sergeant. Yeah, he, Hummel, so he wasn't, he wasn't Hummel, as into it as the other two. He was, it was like, I'm a, I, I'm following Hummel, 
and I thought he was going to do this, but yeah. now he's telling me something else. Yeah. He was so conflicted. Well, oh, was... sorry. Hang on. You mean the major, the other white guy, yeah? No, not the... the major. Oh, okay. So, yeah, fine. The sergeant. The yeah, guy who it. was running, he was running the radar and all that stuff. The little black guy that looks like a little gerbil. <laughs> yes. Is that what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him, yeah. Uh, he's the sergeant. You'll see him later on. Yeah, he's the one, the other black guy that isn't the candy man. Yes. Yeah. He was, he was the sergeant. He was a, like a lower level yeah. guy. He was just taking orders at the, this point the other guys were like captain and and uh, yeah. two captains and the other one was a major and general all that stuff sticky fingers thank you paul sticky fingers <laughs> okay. the, the 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 issue is is well it's closer to the end but the issue is at that shower room scene even when everything was going off hummel was covering his ears just because it was too loud and he was trying to get them to stop yeah he was trying to get them to stop booking woodbane thank you that's that's the name of the dude yeah, that's that's him, the yeah. actor. um he's been in a lot of like small stuff but he's a he's he, it's one of these people that you recognize but you can't think what he's been in exactly so. by the way that pull from the inspector from friends i know exactly what the the, the uh the episode you're talking about yeah, yeah the guy who inspects all the different restaurants and phoebe tries to shag him, phoebe, to get him to, yeah phoebe yeah. tries to like not go out and eat because yeah. he'll shut down all <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah, that's right. yeah 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 that's the guy <laughs> Uh, <laughs> everywhere they go it's like uh, mm. it, it, <laughs> that's such a great pull man yeah anyway um the fact that they have that standoff is like you know i cannot issue that order it's like you can it's just a failed mission and you don't want to fail your mission that's yeah. that whole point it, it didn't make any sense proud. to me at that point just uh, you know, i mean there's it's not going to gain anything from this apart from death so we could have said fine just put us with the other hostages or put the weapons down and let some of them decide. Actually, I'm on major. I'm on um, Hummel's side. Yeah, it, it, it's such because you can already see in, in that scene. You can already see the major when Hummel's telling him when when Michael Bean's saying, "Look, you can't do this. We all took an oath." Blah 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 blah. America, yeah. Uh, yeah. You can already see the major like like uh, holding his gun down, but then going at like Hummel, can't you? Yeah, because I, I most of the Marines there don't think they were that eager to shoot it yeah. was just those mercenary guys and the guys that were like the piss went into their heads it's like yeah. I'm, I'm here to fucking shoot bitches yeah but it all it was started when some rocks fell down didn't it yeah yeah uh, kind of on purpose yeah yeah all right it's just that that sort of like that match to spark the flame right yeah it had to happen and again it's it's Michael Bay shit. It always happens. It happens yeah. in Bad Boys. Bad Boys Two happens in Transformers as well. It's just you can find those things that he does in every single movie. But every single movie, it's a little bit different. That 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 match to that spark to, to match the 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 fire and yeah. it just, just goes off. And the most but ca Candyman was itching to shoot anyway. You're right. Yeah, the most useless death was the guy who was tagging mason like dogging mason. oh the he mexican guy there. Like, just get just why did he and the, the way he pops up and then he's like you're like that, you know what's got you know you can hear what's happening up there can't you every that, all your mates are dying but he's like i've got to go up there i've got to go up there and he goes up there and then he just stares around for a bit and then starts from there which is like if they had a bad vantage point behind the showers he was just in the middle with his head up a fucking hole like there's, there's no way out for him anyway what an idiot and and you know what's re really sad about this whole ordeal no uh -huh. no that activision you know that company uh mm. they make uh, a, a very uh well-known game called call of duty and one of the call of duty more modern warfare games yeah that shower was copied verbatim and put in one of the campaigns was it yes i didn't know that until today and it was like that is so activision thing to do <laughs> it, it, well it <laughs> so is yeah activision thing to do there's a few know, other which, activision things to do which i can yeah. think of but I, I i don't yeah there's a lot of stuff but it, mm. no i didn't know about it until today when i saw it it was like that that's fitting to put like a very horrible scene in your game yeah but it is what it is
Hey Andy, how you doing, man? I see you in the chat. I see yeah, you. and I just want to point out that yes, the guy that the guy that said I'll take pleasure in gutting you, boy, he was also a massive douche. That's right. Yes, and he comes back later too. Yeah. Um. After this whole ordeal, Womack kind of has another exposition dump about who John Mason is. That's right. <laughs> where he like he talks to the that deputy director thing. Yeah. It's like he's British, like he's got the microfilm of British guys on 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 prime ministers, and yeah, he that. knows who J who killed JFK. And he and knows about the Roswell landing. Yeah, yeah, all that stuff, which yeah. is it's just to give us an idea on who he is. Yeah, and the thing is, it would it would be a spy that would do all these things. Yeah. And a spy that is, uh, let's say, accustomed to fighting in water sometimes because yeah. technically he's a commander in the Navy. But a lot, um, a lot of this, but a lot of this, so obviously an American thinks, oh, a British secret agent, what are they like? And they just go, well, I'll tell you what they're like. And then they list a load of things that they've only got from James Bond. Yeah. And, then, and then because Sean Connery's in it, it's like, right, that's it. It's definitely him. But so it gets, like the reason he has to have a suit is because no, because Americans think, or some Americans think that every British secret agent always walks around in a suit. Well, James Bond is always in a suit. Yeah, I know, but he's well, not. not I know he was a real. He's based on a real person. But I mean, there yeah. are. I, I suspect most British secret agents do walk around in a suit. But so, so the most like every single American um, uh, secret security will also walk around in a suit because it's their job. Yeah. That's a, that's a whole point. And the suit is there to blend in with the other suits that they're guarding, basically. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they're but, not going to wear yeah. like PPE, are they? Like, you know, orange yeah, jumpsuits. Yeah. The, the whole point is once everything goes down, Mason is like, I'm out of here. But it takes good speed to like, to tell him, dude, you're. Your daughter's in town, and yeah. if you don't if you don't want to do it, I'll just do it by myself. And Mason's like, no, you can't. You'll just die. Yeah, you'll just die. And uh, he even tells him, like, you know, Womack is lying. I know you're his lying, but you have to do it for your daughter. And that kind of sparks that whole, yeah, I'll do it. And by the way, we did skip the fact that the boiler thing was working still. And Mason kind of like, I hope they didn't change the timing since I was here last 30 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <that's laughs> it's, like out. It's, like, it's a great scene. It for is, like, yeah. Oh, he left us be and he fucked off. And yeah. then he comes out and he open, uh, opens up the door. It's like, what did you expect? I'm like the king here. Let's go. Yeah. Um, of course, Hummel's men are looking for them. They're trying to flush them out with some incendiary bombs. I don't think it kind of works the way it do, but it looks kind of great. And you've got some great, like, uh, Michael Bay explosions and stuff. I like the fact that they had to run away instead of just ducking into the water first. Yeah. My wife was like, why aren't they ducking? And I said, I don't know. It's like, you're <laughs> yes. in water. Just yeah. blow over. <laughs> Right? The, um, uh, one of the best uh, the best line in the film I think is is here. I laughed so much when I saw this, when mm. um, Sean Connery starts telling, uh, sorry, um, Mason starts telling Goodspeed about some history. Yes, he's like, <laughs> because oh, I like history too, and maybe at the end we can both go to the gift shop together. But I don't know. At the moment, I just really want to find some rockets. I just pissed myself when that happens. I thought that was the best line in the film. Yeah, so good. I, I, I think the next line is the best line in the film because okay. when they're going up to the to, to the first rocket, and Mason turns to him, is like, "It's like we're gonna do like we're gonna do this," and Stanley's like, "Well, I'm gonna do my best." Can he kind he kind of calls yeah. him out on the fact that he's not a counter terrorist guy? Yeah, it's like I'll do my best. It's like you're best. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's the best line. It's like, uh, losers get to do their best. <laughs> Winners get to go home and fuck the prom queen. It's like, yeah, yes, that is an ex that's an excellent line. Yeah. 
and and Stanley is like, but it's like, I do, I did fuck the prom queen. It's like my yeah. my girlfriend. Yeah, that that was that was that was a bit. That was a bit. Uh, yeah, I didn't like. like he should have just sharp at that point. Yeah, and then and then Sean Connery's like, that's good. And I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah. whatever. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah. So, the thing is, once they like get rid first of all you have that that little moment where the guy they killed the two dudes and the guy was not really dead he was trying to pull the pin and and mason shoots the the air condition the whole unit comes on his yeah, head it, yeah. and when it does and they go in and try and deal with the thing he's got his <laughs> leg twitching and yeah. and caged this is the most cage he's done it's like the the only cageism that he has it's like what is that <laughs> <That's it. laughs> is that normal <laughs> and it's like it happens <laughs> yeah sometimes and i was like can we make it stop it's like what do you want me to kill him after he's dead <laughs> what should i do kill him again yeah it's brilliant yeah, so stupid yeah oh it was so good but at, after that point you kind of see that role reversal where Mason isn't really into the whole technical, th like technical thing, and yeah. Stanley is in his element. And that what happens is he becomes sort of like the adult, because when they were before, before everything, it kind of seems like Mason is the adult and Stanley is the kid. And suddenly, once Stanley is in his element, Stanley becomes the adult, and suddenly Mason is sort of like bewildered and not yeah. knowing what the fuck is going on but you know technology I, I don't know how, where to put it but i don't think mason should have acted like that it's sort of uh, he lost all his confidence and stanley got all the confidence yeah, yeah but uh it is what it is it is what it is it is, is. what it is it is mm. um I'm, I'm loving, by the way, in the chat, how Michael Myers knows all the, he's getting all these lines exactly right there. Dude, he's getting I, them spot on. My, my, Michael Myers, trust me, like I said at the beginning, I'll forget all the good lines. <laughs> yeah. All the he's, good lines. He's that got them exactly the right. Yeah. Yeah. To remind us all the good lines. And we've seen all of them. <laughs> all of them. Trust me. I, I yeah. don't put them on screen, but we've seen all of them. Thank yeah. you very much, man. And this is what I mean the fact that he's holding these fucking globs of death and he's like yeah. don't touch this don't move this it's like he's treating him like a fucking child but he would be wouldn't he it's like if you if you come out of somewhere after what 30 years and he, he basically he's in a world that he just would i mean it, in fact he very quickly adjusts to this with the room service to the hotel and blah blah, blah and stuff like that but in, in reality if you've been in a in a cave for 30 years and you come out you've got to have some some sort of trust in in other people at some point but he's trusted no one until he gets to the point where he thinks he can trust soundly yeah so maybe that's how i'd explain it anyway uh yeah i, I just i love it when it, it kind of turns on its head so the thing is they get most of the depository of the rockets and all the different uh control crystal uh, not control crystals guidance goddamn, systems star trek the the uh the guidance control Chips, they take yeah, yeah. most of them out and yeah. it's all in inside the vx component so they have to take everything out take out the thing they don't show everything because it's fucking it's stupid yeah so they show one and then after that uh you see um stanley with all basically all of the stuff that they were there except for the two that were deployed and they destroyed them in order to make sure the rocket just goes into the water. That's the whole, ex they explain it to make sure we know as an issue. How good do you think you would be at removing those guidance chips? Because I, I used to think, would I be any good at this? Like the unscrewing the top and then pulling them out and then like putting them down to the side. I think I would be awful. You know those games where you get the little hook and you have to like go along the I am so bad at that. Maybe it's uh, alcohol shakes, I don't know. But there's I... a game called Operation. Oh, I'm terrible. You, you know that game. Yeah. <laughs> it operates on the <clears throat> principles of being like threading threading the needle per yeah. se. 
and not going over to the side. Otherwise, it's game over. Yeah, the yeah, I know operation. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm bad at those two. <laughs> what about Jenga? Are you only good at Jenga? Uh, I, I cheat. Because uh, I'm not great, but my, I've got a friend who's a builder, right? He's literally like hands oh. like a rock. And he is oh. rubbish. So literally, <laughs> he only has to seem to have to go near it. It's like, it's like <laughs> it's there. He gets like right near it and already is fucking over. But the thing is, it's just taking out the stuff. And once you put it aside, it, if you don't agitate it, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Per se. Oh, sorry. I forgot. You, you, you'd yeah, have inside knowledge. Finger, like put, go into the guts of the rock and just pull it out. Yeah. yeah. It's in the middle. He took out the balls because they were in the way. Yeah, because if you were trying to like fidget it out, you would have like damaged oh. one of the globs, and that's yeah. it. Yeah, and that's game it's over. Old. Yeah. Um, but what I was going for is the fact that once they do that, they have again, they have to move from like, uh, it's sort of a roller coaster where it's dramatic and then kind of dips back and then dramatic again and again when they finish up with these uh with these chips immediately they get found out again and there's another chase scene which ends up in you know a, a few more of these marines dying and yeah. they are literally picking them off sort of like in uh like in die hard where he doesn't fight all of them he kind of fights them in little groups and he managed yeah. to escape every single time because that's he's but, lucky the enemies enemies usually choose to separate and go i'll go and get him you guys wait here with the whatever and so, yeah. so, so one person goes off to deal with him. What a shock <laughs> he's gone. And then he obviously can't communicate back. So the next one goes. And then, uh, at no point do they think, well, look, if we all go as a group and there's only one or two of them, we can, we can deal with it. But anyway. Well, they did go as a group and then like threw some incendiary bombs and yeah. thought, well, that's over. Like yeah, nobody yeah. can survive this in water. Yeah. But okay. Like I said, plot holes are plenty, and you yeah, don't yeah. really have to think about it because the whole point is creating the drama, creating the tension, having you on the edge of your seat, chugging down a bucket of popcorn, and just enjoying the thrill ride without overanalyzing what the fuck is going on. Yeah, because you know it, it, it just it just happens. It's just all about the action. Two more Marines die. They manage to escape again, and. They were like, okay, let's move on to the next rocket. And this is the point where Hummel is like, okay, we've got, he calls them rats. It's like, we've got a rat problem. We need to really flush them out. And they take out one of the hostages. One of the hostages. I don't have it on screen right now. They, so if I can tell you though, they bring out the most pathetic looking hostage you could possibly find. Yeah. Like, it's, like, it's as if this guy's like acting CV says pathetic hostage right? and uh, and his, his show reel is just him crying yeah uh, the saddest it. looking bloke anyway there yeah. he is yeah and at this point they actually think it's a couple more navy seals they don't know who it is and what it yeah. is and then what mason does is saying well look you go to the rockets you can dis defuse them i can't defuse them i'll go and I'll buy basically buy you some time without yeah. saying I'll buy you some time. I'll just go and you go and, and take care of that because uh, I, I trust he trusts them at this point. Yeah, uh, uh, it's all about that. And when he goes and I'm going to go through the we'll talk about this. When Mason talks to Hummel. Hummel says, uh, state your name, sailor. Now, Navy SEALs, it's Navy. And yeah. what it, what Mason says is like Army. Yeah. He specifically says Army. Yeah. Now, if he was James Bond, he would have told, he would have been fine with being, you know, called a, a, a sailor. Yeah. Because he was one. Yeah. But because so many years he's been, you know, uh, you know, misleading people because he's a spy, he's like, I'm an army, army captain right. at this point. Okay. Yeah, uh, that's the whole deal. Now, is it or is it just in, like got it wrong? Yeah, people who are into this, uh, the theory, yeah. the theory about James Bond goes a little bit deeper. The fact that Hummel actually knew Mason for being a sailor because he heard about him in a news article. Right. Uh, 
it's a little bit of a stretch. Yeah, this is fan fiction, isn't it? Like proper fan. Uh, uh, th that part of the theory about James Bond is a little bit of a stretch. The yeah, whole point yeah. is he's a Navy SEAL, so he, the guy would have called him a sailor regardless. Yeah. Right? Uh, but the fact that he's surprised that he's that old, but he doesn't mention the fact that he's old at all because he respects him at, at, a, at a sort of a, like the level that a general would respect any soldier. That's, mm. that's how, I, I, uh, how I view it. The fact that he um, even gave respects to the team leader uh, before everything went down. Mm. Uh, he respects him as much. But uh, Stanley kind of tries to defuse the next rocket, and there's the meanie dude, the, the mean marine guy who comes in. Uh, Candyman. Spider-Man style. No, not the Candyman. Which one is this that comes it's in? the white dude with the, uh, with the goatee. Right, okay. It's the white. Uh, well, I've, but I missed out with the, the bloke from Scrubs was in it at the start as well, wasn't he? He was one of the baddies. The bloke from Scrubs. The bloke from Scrubs. The guy, um, you know, the the main baddie from Scrubs. The Jan. Is it? The, no, not the oh, Jan. Uh, no, the Captain other doctor. Hendrix. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, John C. McGinley. Yeah. That's, that's it. That's yeah. Yeah. Uh, he died in the the shower scene. No, he didn't die in the shower scene. He died when they chased him through the tunnels. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah, got it. Uh, uh, we'll call it the Temple of Doom chase scene because they're basically using uh, the carts. Same, not really the same carts, but kind of like the carts that they use in Temple of Doom. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that was good, that. Um, where is it? Where is it? So, uh, Stanley gets to defuse the rocket and destroy the chip, and then he gets caught. So, he does manage yeah. to defuse the, the one rocket, but he gets caught. Mason gets caught, and they were both sent into uh, the, the cells. And they have that conversation. Yeah. Where, while they're talking, and Stanley is like, how did how the fuck did you get out of this thing yeah. while mason is actually trying to get out of this thing yeah. as he opens one it opens up the, the 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 door next to him throws another one opens up the the next door and he goes down to stanley is like and after stanley told him it would be great if you did what you did back then just now and then of course he shows up yeah straight away yeah door. <laughs> brilliant um which is, it's a great little comedic moment, and it it needs to be there. All the comedic moments between Mason and Stanley, perfect. Because yeah, it's not really good. over the top, ha ha, laughs per minute kind of a comedy. It's just a little comedic moment for you to like chuckle, and continue on this thrill ride that you're on. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's that's to me that was the whole point. Um, but then Mason is kind of like, ah, oh, fuck it. Fuck the last rocket. I'm just going to leave. <laughs> and, and it's like, Stan is like, why are you leaving? And the whole point of Mason leaving is because he had that conversation with Hummel and even says it to Stanley. I looked in his eyes. He's never going to do it. He's not doing it. Yeah. He's yeah. not doing it. And while they have that conversation, as Mason's kind of leaving and St Stanley doesn't know what the fuck's going on, Hummel already is that point at the point of that deadline. The deadline. What is, uh, and it kind of everything kind of frails in. The uh, Kramer, the guy who knows Hummel, is like Frank. Just I need another hour, and Hummel's like. No, no I'm bullshit. just gonna yep. fire this thing. Yeah, and we already know the thermite is ready to go. They've loaded up on the planes, and the planes are just going. They already transferred the order to the president, and the president is like having that speech, it's like, "This is the toughest decision in my life." Blah 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 yeah. blah blah. By the way, they use the same president in another movie. <laughs> of michael bay 
and he's cre credited as the president. Yeah. I don't um, know. I, I, I didn't put it in my notes because I don't have it on me, but he was used in a different movie of Michael Bay's. I don't remember if it was Transformers or something else that Michael Bay did, but it was as the oh, president okay. in a different movie. Yeah. Uh, it's not right. a famous actor. Normally, there's a few people no, who no, play no. the president. One of those character actors that you've seen him yeah. in one or two things. And it's like the guy who always plays like the that the uh, either a general or a secret service person with like a shaved ginger head, and like yeah. I don't know his name, but he's in everything, and he's always the same character. Yeah. All right. We will stop here because there are basically a few more action scenes, and that's it. Yeah. We'll play our second game of the night. It is called Screen Fighter. Round one, fight. Screen Fighter is where we take two movies, pit them together, and see which one is the best one. If there's no discernible difference between the two, both of them are good, or both of them are bad, we fall into our criteria, which is Friday evening, Saturday evening, out with the boys, out with the girls, out with your significant other. Two movies in a vacuum. Which one will we pop in? And it is Bablam chat participation is most welcome ladies and gentlemen 48 hours or broke back mountain well i know which okay. one of these is your favorite you want um, you want me to go no <laughs> uh ooh, this is a tough one <clears throat> um i'd be tempted to say 40 hours for nostalgia but broke back mountain is is the is the better film i think what do you reckon? Yeah, but which one will you pop <coughs> in? If those are your two choices, yeah. which one will you watch? Very hard. Very hard. Uh, Scott has that, seen it. Scotty boy, I've seen you, man. Thank you for that, joining that, us, man. That is a tough one. Uh, I think I'm still going to go. I'll, I'd go Broke Black Mountain, I think. All right. Cool. Cool. Uh, for me, I'm not going to diss on Broke Black Mountain. It is a great movie. Subject matter is not to my liking, yeah. but hey, subject matter aside, yeah. the movie is great. Yeah. It's really, really, really good, and it's worth watching. But Forty Eight Hours is very special. First of chat, all, first chat has gone hard on Forty Eight Hours. Forty Eight Hours for for this reason. First, it's Eddie Murphy's first film, right. and he did great. You ate, people don't remember, in 1982, well, technically 1981 when they shot this, he was about 21 years old. He doesn't look 21 years old. He doesn't. And he, he comes off he's much older. Eddie Murphy has looked 35, 36 from 1980 to, to now. Yes. He, he, has, he doesn't, he's never looked 21 and he's never looked 50. He's always been like that. Yeah, and black don't crack. They just they say that, yeah. And another credit to this movie, regardless of the acting, the plot, and the story, you can uh, you can maybe say that this was the first buddy cop movie that was a template to any other movie that came after this. Lethal Weapon, Cop Out, if you want to put Cop Out in this. Uh, any uh, rush hour, all the buddy cop movies from this moment on were on this template. Yeah. A non cop with a cop or a wild cop with a, a straight cop. All of those combinations work in the buddy cop system. Dragnet was the same. Yeah, it was yeah. a little bit different, but it was the same. So this one is the credit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> thank you, Jay. Thank Sorry. you for that private chat. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Can't use that. No, uh, I don't. Yeah. Chat, chat is the decider on this. Yeah, good. Idiocracy or Hocus Pocus? Right. Well, I, I, I really like both of these films. Okay. Um, Hocus Pocus is, a, is brilliant. I watch it every, every Halloween. I think, um, uh, although that's probably going to be replaced now by that new one that Amazon Prime did. Like, I totally killer. But um, Idiocracy is, just for the first 10 minutes alone, is an absolute gem. Uh, I, I love Idiocracy. I've got to go Idiocracy, I think. All right. For me, 
idiocracy all the way. I don't like ho hocus pocus. I know, you know a lot of people do. I know a lot of people do. I'm not going to diss it. I know nah. a lot of people do. I pr don't like it for me. Okay? I, I don't know. like those combinations. I really don't like Sarah, like Sarah, uh, not Sarah. Jessica Parker. Je Sarah, Sarah Jessica Parker. Yeah. I don't like her in that role. Bette Midler is spot on in this movie. Like, yeah. she's yeah. spot on. The other two, not working for me. Also, Idiocracy is great. You know why? It because the future. Rondo is what plants crave. Yeah, that's right. It's got electrolytes. <laughs> um, the the, uh, the other thing is Hocus Pocus does have child actors, which takes it uh, notches it down to a couple of points. Uh, not not an issue for me. All right, return return to Salem's Lot or Army of the Dead. This is I the have new... seen neither. All right. Cool. Master and Commander or National Lampoon's European Vacation? National Lampoon's European Vacation. My <laughs> wife and I are looking for sex. <laughs> <laughs> I, there's, I mean, National, European Vacation is nowhere near as good as the original Vacation, but there's some scenes in it that are brilliant. When, when they go and buy clothes in Italy, it is fantastic. Uh, Rusty and the and the be the family beret, um, Pig in the Poke are. I, it's, uh, there's some, a lot of crap in it. Like they, they involve yeah. a lot of the Monty Python people and stuff, which is a bit rubbish. But like, um, but I, I thought that was, I think that's brilliant. And Master and Commander is a bit there. Nah. I, I didn't like Master and Commander. No, I, okay. I really didn't. I, it's just, it, it's sort of. Uh, somebody put it a, a long time ago. This is like what S Star Trek wanted to do: Horatio Hornblower in space. Right. This is actually Horatio Hornblower, right. and it sucks. Um, National Lampoon's European Vacation was my first National Lampoon, like the first vacation movie I've seen, right? I didn't oh. see Christmas Vacation first. I saw this one first, and I, I mean, didn't put the connection between the two after I've seen the Christmas Vacation. I didn't know it was the same family. I just thought it was a. Well, it's, it's not family. really, is it? Because they they replaced both the, both the kids. But the um, but the, the I mean, my sister and I have watched the original National Lampoon's Vacation, hundreds of times, and I think I could I think I could recite that film word for word. <sighs> the original is outstanding. There's so many good bits in it. Like I said, this was my first vacation. Yeah. After that, I've seen Vacation, and then a Christmas vacation. Though I saw Christmas Vacation second and i've seen the original vacation third which is your favorite one because most people say christmas now i i i think christmas is we've covered it on the show so it's a recency bias yeah. maybe vacation is really fucking good have you seen it's vegas really it's better than european vacation for sure yeah have you seen vegas vacation is is that a new one? That is no. It's it's about. I think it was came out about five years after the Christmas one, but it is dire. Uh, I I I I may have seen it and I don't remember. And no, it's, there's it's terrible. A new one with Ed Helms being the main Griswold. Yeah, that, that's not great. Meet the old yeah. ones later on, and that that one. So and the worst one is Cousin Eddie's Hawaiian Christmas. Oh, I mean, that I is just that one. It's fucking <laughs> awful. Oh, it's that, awful. That is dire. Howard the oh this is perfect. Howard the Duck, or analyze that, which is the sequel to analyze this. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm not a big fan. I've I've seen both of them. I'm not a big fan of either. I mean, Howard mm -hmm. the Duck when I was a kid, I watched and I thought, oh, this is fun, isn't it? But it's crap. <laughs> um. Oh. And, and I don't. I, Robert De Niro pisses me off. Um. <laughs> Ah, uh, I'm torn on this one. I think uh, I think I'm just going to choose gonna... first. Sorry, I'll yeah, choose. Yeah, you choose. First yeah, one. for me, it's yeah. Howard the Duck. Right, all the fucking way. It's a terrible movie. <laughs> and if you're a fan of like the comic book Howard the Duck, it's even worse. Is it because it's it has nothing to do with the fucking comic book, other than the fact that he's a duck from outer space. That's it. All right. 
It's got the bird from Dude, Back to the Future when she was hot. Howard the Duck had duck boobies that yeah. you actually liked. I Analyze don't recall that. that. <laughs> the problem with Analyze That is yeah. the fact that there was some kind of good magic between uh, Crystal and De Niro in the, in the first one yeah. that worked. Right. But it was like a massive success. It was a uh, it was a moderate success. It was a success it, successful enough to have a sequel. But it's so fun. it's like watching City Slickers two. The question is, why was this made? I like City Slickers two. I think that's I all right. Know, it's not as good. It's, it's not as good as one, City but it's still Slickers. good. It's not City Slickers. No, it's not. And I always get it mixed up with Mickey Blue Eyes as well that analyzes this. Uh, <laughs> right. Dirty Laundry or Coco? Not you seen either. Seen both? No. All right. Switch it. Live Free, Die oh. Hard. That's the f four, fifth one? Fourth that, one. That is an absolute abomination. And I've not seen Hugo, but I'm gonna, if I had to pick one of those films, I'd literally pick anything over Live Free or Die Hard. I have children, and I was kind of forced to have Hugo in the background. I right. don't remember a single moment of it, but I've definitely ha physically watched it. Yes. Yeah. Live Free, Die Hard is an abomination against reality. Yeah. But it did have the warlock scene with Kevin Smith. Right. <laughs> he wrote to make the whole movie make sense. Yeah. Um, I mean, Live Free or Die Hard is so bad. I, yeah. I, I just cannot believe how bad it was. Like, uh, because uh, because yeah. one, two, and three are, are brilliant. Yeah. 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 Even, like, people, like, sleep on two. I think it's a good movie. I, I think it's a good Die Hard movie. Let's Two's just say good, that. yeah. Three, three is my favorite, I think. When I watched Die Hard 2 for the very first time, yeah. I didn't see it coming. People say, well, we saw it coming. It was telegraphed, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I, I, think, I think if you've watched, I, I think if you watch it for the very first time, you don't know what the twist is until yeah. it actually happens. But I'm going to give it to Live Free, Die Hard just okay. because of the warlock scene. Right. Last one. Original Fox version of Fantastic Four. Very appropriate. Very timely. And Kingsman, The Secret Service. Right. I actually really like both of these films. All right. Uh, but I think Kingsman is... Is Kingsman the latest one, or is it the first one? The, is this the first one? Yeah. I, oh, that's, I mean, the third this one's the really good one. as well. You can, you can um, tell by the fact that uh, uh, Samuel L. Jackson is in front and center. I couldn't see that. Because it's, uh, I know. It's a bit but, blurry. Yeah. I will. I, yeah, I think. I think I've got to go um, uh, to see uh, Kingsman. I think it's slightly better. Than, but I did really like Fantastic Four. Right. I the thing is with the Fantastic Four. When I saw it for the very first time, it wasn't bad. I've seen. I think I've seen it in in the theater as well. Yeah, I'm not I did. sure. I didn't think it was that bad. The problem is it got a bad rap because again, it's of the same vein of remember. X Men was out. I think X Men Two was already out. Spider Man Two was already out at this point. I think yeah. maybe even Spider Man Three was out at this point. So it's uh, funny to think that there was uh, people was experiencing some superhero fatigue after yeah. four films in two thousand and five. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it all kind of turned out in its head once an actual good superhero movie came out in the form of Iron Man. Yeah, yeah. people forget. This didn't. This did well, but not supremely well. Yeah. And then it came up with the second one, and the second one. I don't think it. The second one lost money, but it didn't do like spectacular. That was the well. rise of the Silver Surfer, was it? Yes. So yeah. And and people who were into the comics were like, "This is garbage. This yeah, is not." Well, it wasn't woke. It was just shit. Yeah, yeah. That's the story right. I mean, the, the the most recent Fantastic Four films just absolutely is tedious. Oh yeah, the one with Michael B. Jordan. I, yeah. I, I've watched like half of it. I I didn't enjoy it at all. It's just, it's one of those I'd never watched it in the theater. The the yeah. the recent one I didn't watch it in the theater. Watched it like on cable. Yeah, it's, yeah. Not, it's not for me. I just switched it. I think Kingsman is a brilliant movie. 
Yeah. It's a brilliant movie. It's a sort of a they made it into a franchise, which I don't like. I think it's a good standalone movie, and you don't really need Kingsman. But I think I think all three of them are really good. I I I didn't need it. Let's just no. say that it's, no. they're not bad. I just didn't need them. Yeah, uh, I didn't it. need that massive bar of dairy milk I had earlier, but I fucking loved it. <laughs> uh, that's one. The next pair was pretty good. What was it? Uh, Super Mario Brothers from 1993, and oh. and starts Starsky and Hutch the movie with Ben oh, Star Stiller. Oh, and Starsky and Hutch every time, isn't it? I mean, oh. that Super Mario Brothers film from the 90s oh, was horrible. terrible. Yeah, that John Leg Lego with the armor bloke is such a bitter, sad prick now, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. So it it's so weird because he's one of uh, one of those movies that I actually really like, and he has a great role in it. Yeah. Uh, the movie Chef with um, John Favreau. He has a great like small part. Uh, uh, I've not seen that, and he's uh, great in that part because he basically pl plays himself, which I absolutely love. Well, let me tell you, which he's also very good in Summer of Sam, but um, the the, the worst John Leguizamo performance I've ever seen, and it's a terrible film, is called The Pest. Now, if anyone in chat has seen that, let me know because it is literally it is absolutely shocking. I mean, it's up there with Black Knight as far as humor goes. Have you seen Spawn the movie? No. He plays the villain in it, and he's a. Uh, he's a clown, but he looks like a Humpty Dumpty. Right. Cross between a clown and a Humpty Dumpty. Now, it's a real villain from the comic book. Yeah. And Spawn is a pretty good movie, and it's just got a bad rap. John Lagazamo as the villain in it is fucking awesome. Awful. Oh, it doesn't surprise me. Excuse me while I update my Twitter movie. profile to say a cross between a clown and Humpty Dumpty because I thought yeah. I had a ring to it. <laughs> my Tinder, sorry, Tinder. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's, uh, John Lagazama, it's a hit of a miss. Dude, the guy played a season or two in ER in the yeah. TV series and he was t terrible. He was just right. a bland character. Had nothing. Yeah. He gave nothing. He was just there to pick up a paycheck. No, fair enough. All right. Cool. Right. Enough of this. So, Hummel, Hummel, they, uh, what they do is, it's like, the deadline is over. Hummel is being forced to shoot up a rocket. The rocket kind of shoots. We know it's going to go, uh, finally it's going to go into the Super Bowl, not Super Bowl, in this football stadium. And at the very, basically the very last moment, he kind of overrides everything and he throws it into the, into the bear, into the bay, sorry. And his, his men is like, what the fuck just happened? Mm. And they figure out it's him. And he even says it because he's very forthright, Hummel. It's like, yeah, yeah I wasn't prepared to to kill a bunch of people. And there are clues along the way that kind of tells us, even like I mentioned before, Mason does say, I looked in his eyes and he's not going to do it. No. He's sort of, a, um, we'll call it a man of honor. We'll call it like, like that. He's like, he fought for his country. It's not something he is really prepared to do. And Hummel flat out says it. And it comes to this, weird standoff as we've got the two mercenaries because of the exposition dump we know yeah. they're there for the money candy candy man's like what do you mean we're not killing innocent people yeah i came here for the money yeah and uh the inspector from friends is like yeah we're gonna <laughs> this, we're gonna do with this weird with this weird face yeah it's like, he should be he should have played the joker <laughs> Uh, you never know with this with these things in Hollywood. He might have been up for one of the Jokers. We yeah, he's already know. got. He doesn't even need. To, it's like Jack Nicholson didn't need the face paint to look like a Joker, did he? Kind of. Yeah, because anyone with that grin. And brilliant. the whole point is that whole um, uh, that whole standoff. Oh, wait, I, it's, uh, we'll put it at this. We always have Major Baxter, which we already know has been with Hummel since forever yeah. yeah there's a point where he pulls out his gun because we know it's like a 
to the sergeant who doesn't know what the fuck is going on. We've got Hummel with his gun out with these two mercenaries coming in. We just need a tiebreaker, sort of a tiebreaker. And the major pulls out his gun and he kind of fakes shooting, like aiming at Hummel. Yeah. And it kind of turns and then this whole, we'll call it a Mexican standoff because it is a Mexican standoff. Yeah. Even though the Mexican died in the shower room. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> But he did though, didn't he? Oh, I assume he's Mexican or some, from somewhere down there. I don't know. Well, he was. <laughs> what Puerto Rico? Whatever. Yeah. Mexican standoff. It's it another name off. for Mexico. Hummel Hummel kind of uh, gets k wounded. We'll call it that this way. Baxter gets dead. The sergeant gets killed, but the two mercenaries are alive and well. As Mason kind of got convinced. Basically, by this point, Goodspeed kind of convinced him to go back. Yeah. They drag Hummel out, and they like they go for the the sec the second. There is another rocket coming in, right? There's actually there were three. Goodspeed got the th the third one, not third one, the the one, and there's two left after that. Yeah. After yeah. they got caught, kind of missed that. I'm sorry. And then he goes for the other one makes it through after Candyman kind of goes after him, after this, the whole Mexican standoff goes on. And we'll put it this. And they kind of have a sort of a standoff as Stanley destroys the chip, but they got to get turned around the, the fact that Candyman is literally standing in front of the rocket. Yeah. And of course, he brings up this whole reference thing about the Rocket Man, Elton and John. It's like I don't listen to that soft shit. Yeah, I, <laughs> that was the. This is the worst line in the film. This a hundred. Really? Yeah, I mean, I thought it was so bad. It's just something. It's like, do you ever have you ever heard the song Rocket Man by Elton John? Is like, and then he. Well, I like what the Candy Man says back, and then he goes, "Oh, I was just wondering because it's you. You're the Rocket." I I just thought that is so bad. They'd have yeah, been much. The re you mean the retort? What Stanley says? Oh, you're I, you're the Rocket Man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because it doesn't. It's just it's just rubbish. It's something that if someone if someone said that and you were around them, everyone would go, "That was shit, mate." You, you think? Do you know what I mean? But it's in a film. I can't believe that. I can't believe they wrote that down and were like, "I wouldn't surprise me if Quentin Tar if that was Tarantino's bit." That oh, had really? It. Yeah, because it's rubbish. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Maybe it was an original writer. Who knows? Never yeah. mind. I don't like, like soft ass shit. shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great line by the Candyman, but it falls up to Stanley saying the worst kind yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. You, you're the it's Rocket just, Man. So just that line. I don't like That's soft ass shit. It's just thing. like it's, it's his whole personality, isn't it? It's like he he does that guy doesn't have feelings. Yeah. Doesn't have feelings. Yeah. 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 Sadly, Dempsey. No, they don't. There's none of that in this. Well, there was earlier, but. Uh, <laughs> good evening and then of course <laughs> stanley uh stanley goes for the the it's like he i think yeah uh, he figures out the lighthouse later from hummel i think i think hummel tells him about the 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 light yeah he does when, he, when he's just a, he and then he goes, what have i done i thought i was a bit shit as well it's like you know you've had time to think about this this is it. the whole the whole thing about the baddies and hummel's gang is that they decided this this morning and like they suddenly like oh what have i done it's like no, you you've had ages and you should have known there was a possibility that if you weren't gonna that people might get annoyed anyway sorry go on no no, no that's fine it's, I, uh, I i love it it gives me a respite to breathe <laughs> yeah fair enough <laughs> now the thing is once stanley gets to the final rocket right he's in the lighthouse he dismantles the thing takes out the the uh the chip and it gets destroyed so we know there's no more we know that there's no more rockets now there is an outside pressure coming in because we know the planes are coming so there's always drama there's always tension there's always like a sense of uh of urgency we'll call it that because stuff is going on stanley gets you know shot the thing is this he has the balls and he puts them away at this grate. Yeah. One of the balls kind of 
lets let loose. Stanley quickly grabs it before uh. it explodes. And why, what, what does he do that makes no sense? Puts it in his top pocket. Puts it in his fucking pocket. <laughs> now, it makes no goddamn sense. Because you would think he would put it in the grate back yeah. where he put, put the other balls. Put it safe. So it won't, you know, get the, or just the guy hide it anywhere it, right? on the floor where there's lot, not no chance of something anyway. Yeah. No, the, the whole point is he's getting like heavy gunfire from the other side of of the prison. Yeah, so he puts all the stuff away in case you know it doesn't explode. Yeah, yeah. kill him, kill everybody there, and then he puts it in his pocket. But the whole point is he'll need it for later on. <laughs> we don't know it yet, but he'll need it for later on yeah. to make the other scene make sense. Yeah. Uh, so Mason takes care of the 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 last kind of marine that sh kind of shoots Stanley. He kind of wastes all his ammo, and then yeah. he, and then he thinks to pick up his fucking sniper rifle. Has has him in his uh, crosshairs. Mason comes in, saves the day. And Stanley takes care of everything, but he does have that thing in his pocket. And he've got he's got Mr. Inspector on his tail. And they have a fight. <laughs> and you would expect Mr. Uh, Captain Dude to you know, like get his prey quickly. Mm. And then what happens is they have a fight where the ball that is here. He, there's no fucking way he smashes it for like they're so up close and personal yeah, yeah. that ball would have been smashed there's yeah. no way but of course it's movie magic it doesn't happen and stanley uh, i i have to uh adjust it uh uh it's shaky cam yeah there <laughs> right right before he stucks the ball right in his fucking mouth yeah and you would think and it happens in every fucking single movie but nobody actually does it because it it will create a plot hole yeah. when you put stuff in your mouth and you don't want it in there what do you do yeah quiet you spit it out no you don't you go ah no you go ah so <laughs> Puts it oh in no, mouth. there's something in my mouth. Ah. Ah, there's something in my mouth. And he presses his jaw so the thing explodes. And now Stanley has to take out his fucking atropine thing. Now, it's this is a, a great setup and payoff for me because yeah. they introduce these long ass needles into the heart. Factually correct. That's what you need to do. Mm -hmm. You can't. Let's just say this. The needles inside the the glass room were not accurate cuz it's not like that. You it has to be a device where you don't do not control the needle coming out. The problem with the needle coming out is that first you have to put it next to your heart and then you have to press the button and then the needle comes out. Yeah. You don't take the needle out if you take the needle out, it will start spraying. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so he takes out the thing and then he sticks it in. Factually incorrect. Sorry. Plot hole for me. Yeah. No, fair enough. But in terms of the movie, he sticks the needle in. By the way, after you got that stuff in your in your if once you have atropine in to save your life, you can't move. Like you can't move. But for the movie, what it does, it creates a slowing down effect. Yeah. So he can't rush outside and, and use the flares. It takes a while, which creates more tension than the fact that there's sort of a, a bomb with a ticking clock, but you don't see the bomb or the clock. You just yeah, I mean, this, this moment is absolutely brilliant when he grabs the flares, isn't it? Because you've not only have you got the, the whole thing with the... the it's got like literally everything. It's got deadly chemicals. It's got uh, planes coming with a bomb. It's got baddies. It's, it's, it's got, a t and there's like a time limit. It's like countdown five, 
Because when they call the abort off, you think, oh, is it going to happen in time? Is going to happen? And I'm actually surprised that they actually let one bomb go. Uh, yeah, but that's that's communication because it has to go through yeah. a chain yeah, exactly. of okay. No, abort. what I mean is I'm okay. surprised the film let one bomb go. Oh. As in, as in, usually you'd expect it to go, and then everyone cheers at the end. Yeah, but like. But they did actually let one go because that just created another thing. <gasps> oh my god, the bomb's gone off. Is Stanley dead? Yeah. And then it takes him ages to answer the phone. But uh, I, I need to get to a specific spot, but I can't get it. Let's let's call it there. I I, I have to have I, the the stuff that it's a really great shot. That's why I put it on my uh, the the behind the screen stuff because yeah. it's a really great shot and it's one of those moments in film that even if you haven't seen the movie there's one of those like ca capture capture a moment of a film and that is the moment where he's like with the flares trying to desperately trying to signal them do not send the bomb it's not the same and context yeah, but there's a very similar shot in platoon yes it is and it's a very similar shot in tropic thunder as well yeah which i assume is there because of platoon yeah yeah, it's exactly. Yeah. And and this this moment where they kind of like get the abort mission and one bomb goes off. It's like, oh, shit, I dropped one. And we've got the that last explosion, which, again, it's all Michael Bay. He loves yep. this thing. He loves that tension and he loves that explosion at the end, which gives the audience a, a sense of, oh, shit. Yeah, it, it happened something happened and you're still on your edge of your seat even more you're almost at the point of falling down unless you're well i'm not gonna say it <laughs> not, yeah not, it, not, i mean I, that, that it was an excellent um excellent last moment wasn't it that yeah really and good. when he literally ju like mason jumps into the water to save to save him and when he does save him and at this point good speed is like yeah they good speed kind of good speed kind of figures out mason is gonna run away again the that's why the other thing is when he goes into the water to save him it does look like nicholas cage is dead but by that time so much has happened you just know he's not yes yeah. i know <laughs> it's sort of a action movie rule it's like yeah. yeah we kind of figured he's not really dead yeah um and another little piece of uh point where they kind of talk to each other. I want to get to that point exactly. Where he's talking to him is like, if you fancy a little, you know, excursion, a little tour, a little uh, trip, if you will, why don't you just uh, go to Kansas yeah. to this church? There's a, there's a pew. The first pew has a hollow leg. If you g grab that, that's a gift from me to you. He doesn't tell yeah. him what's now. He, you know, he, he put he, he hands him a note, right? And that's like a, a little post-it. And by the time he's read the post-it, Sean Connery's like a ghost. He's miles away. It's like, it's like literally a thousand meters behind him. My wife said exactly what you said. <laughs> I was like, John Mason is such a great SAS operative. Yeah. He can teleport. Even at Sixty. He can teleport in five <laughs> seconds yeah, that's to right, the yeah. other side of Alcatraz. <laughs> yeah, and, and then wave here, over. A second later, <laughs> yeah. it's so fucking good. I laughed Brilliant. so hard. Love it. And my daughter, at this point, my daughter was like, this movie sucks. What? Like, what? Oh, what? She needs to grow up. Yeah. Oh, yeah that's fair enough. <laughs> she needs to be a man. Yeah, no. <laughs> hey, grow grow a pair. Ashley, don't say that because she fucking will do. Ashley, you're pretty safe over there, aren't you? Uh, yeah, pretty safe. Yeah, well, in so that many words. Look, that look. After, <laughs> he was literally on the other side on that uh, parapet or whatever it is, and that walkway, <laughs> and then he disappears. Yeah, that's it, yeah. It's so fucking good. Let's just hope he hasn't fallen. Uh. <laughs> uh and of course, when Womack comes in, he's like, "What? what ha where's Mason? I want to see the body." <laughs> it's like it's va he's vaporized, sir. Does yeah. it can happen? Vaporized? Vaporized? Yes. Yeah. It's like yes, of Brilliant. course. 
I'm the chemical expert. Do <laughs> not question me. And this is basically the end. Well, there's a shot where him and Carla, uh, it's, uh, with the with a just married car, because you have to have that like uh, happy American, a uh, wholesome American ending. Yeah. With the just married. Sorry, really wholesome. He steals from a church. But yeah, yeah. he steals from a church, yeah. and he's like, "Honey, do you want to know who killed JFK?" Yeah, brilliant. So, and, and and aren't they lucky that in 30 years the church hasn't had a refurb? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> especially a church that is outside of like a nowhere it's easily a bit shut down I suppose, yeah, yeah. or burnt down by a group of nasty people who didn't like now, some of the uh yeah now did you know that michael bay was set to do another the rock no and, I, and i'm this. glad it never happened and i am so happy it didn't happen yeah because it's one of those and just because of, just because Stanley has that microfilm at the end, it needs to not happen because it's such, it's like, you're going to get killed yeah. by like FBI, CIA, take your pick an agency. He would have been executed. No, sorry. <coughs> he would have been suicided. Like, yeah. like Mason said, Mason said, even, even said it, I would have been suicided. Yeah. If, they would have find out if I had the microfilm or they they would find it. Right. Yeah. And uh sort of like, you know, um, what they do for uh, all the all the uh Hillary Clinton friends. Yeah, but speaking of that, I've just been told uh in in the chat that no church anywhere can afford a refurb. And yeah, that, that <laughs> that's pretty accurate. However, there are a few, like I'd suggest the ones that um, you know, that, that woman who died with her husband in the plane. I'm suggesting that one probably could. I can't remember what that's called. It's that thing on, um, I don't can't remember her name now, but it's ridiculous. Or the Hillsong Church and uh, any of these churches that, you know, uh, insist on a tithe, let's say that. Oh, oh, you mean those kind? I don't think yeah. it was that kind of a it church. Wasn't that, it wasn't that kind of church. But they, they, the legit thing is, church? they do take over them. Though. They spread themselves out, don't they? So if you get one, they start taking other churches <laughs> kind over. Of? But yeah, yeah for, the, for this story, I don't think it was that kind of a church, but you know yeah all right cool that kind of brings us to uh, the end of the show uh a few words before we go just to summarize the movie jay what was your experience after like maybe what 20th time that you've Lo seen this movie? love it I, I still i still love it it's still it's even though you know exactly what happens it's still a fun watch because like i don't know how films do this even though you know what happens some films are so good and like uh, that you, you you're still on the edge of your seat now, not as much as when I first watched it, but if you haven't seen this, you should really watch it. Especially if you, you know, even if you're not an action movie fan, it's it's great. Yeah, and I think, again, Bruckheimer, uh, on all of his movies, it's mostly down to him approve at, at the end of the day approving the casting. The director comes in and does have a say in most most things, but generally speaking, the Bruckheimer movie or a Bruckheimer produced movie, he has final say on the casting. And the fact that Cage was approved to be a semi-decent action star, yeah. you would say, in, yeah. in a role that he has never done before, but he did bring his own stuff, and, but he was able to hang with Sean Connery. Yeah. As Sean Connery is sold as a 65 year old badass yeah and you believe he's a badass he doesn't do too many crazy things mostly a little bit more physical but he when he is one-to-one -one, he does get beat when he do, when he has the element of surprise he does get you know uh, he does manage to make it work when he doesn't have the element of surprise, he does get beat. Yeah, but he's still an old man. Yeah, yeah, so. but it's still an old man. But yeah. he, he makes he makes do, and it it just works. I didn't feel like he was like this super, like superhuman strength or whatever. He was a sixty five year old with a little bit more training and knowledge, and managed to uh, to to make it work. Yeah, apart from the teleport, like that's yeah, of course. Yeah. That's yeah. the most unbelievable part in this whole movie. And it that this reputation carried on into Con Air and then into Face Off, as in 
they counted on him to actually pull his weight and do the action bits. It's more prevalent in Con Air where he's got a much more physical role yeah. as yeah. opposed to um, Face Off. And we kind of discussed it when we you know, talked about those movies. But in this movie, it's sort of the beginning. And even though it's a Michael Bay movie, I fucking love it. I love it so much. I haven't yeah. seen it in a while, five, six years, something like that. I didn't lose a beat. I loved all the all 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 the stuff that I remember was there. All the funny bits, all the plot like plot holes, all the stuff. Remembered it, loved it, couldn't get enough of it, and I will probably watch it sometime in the in the near future because I I really enjoyed it. Even on my on my plane ride to the US, I'll put it on and have some fun. Or just make make sure I fall asleep during it. I don't know. Yeah. Whichever one it is first. All right, cool. Uh, Jay, anything you're uh, doing something special or just a regular stuff? Just regular stuff. I'm not, um, don't really do much uh, live stream anymore. Um, yeah, my yeah. Uh, personal life has taken a bit of a turn and I will sadly be more busy than, uh, than I have been over the past 10 years. Um, so that's, um, yeah. So I basically have had to come out of retirement. So no more YouTube in the day party at night. All right, cool. Yeah. Uh, anyway guys please go check out no no seriously go check out jay's channel i i made it a, a a choice and a privilege to go and watch every single one of your videos because they actually do make me laugh because i don't care about any of those movies you watch and i don't know how the fuck you watch those things bless you because you condense them down and make sure it's fun. Those are fun fucking videos, guys. Go and watch. If you like it, put up subscribe. If you don't like it, just leave it be because I, I think they're enjoyable. You might find them enjoyable too. Links, description down below. And for Jay's Twitter, if you want to interact with him outside of the YouTube world, of course, if you want to interact with me, sub, whatever, do whatever. Uh, I just want you to, just like Jay, I don't care too much about subs. I do want you to enjoy the stuff that is coming out. All the reviews and the weekend shows. Now, announcement. In the next three weeks, we will, we will not have a live show. However, each and every single week, at the same time uh, of this show, there will be a show episodes. I've pre-recorded stuff in the past few weeks. One with Pops, one with Vex Electronica, and one with both Andre and Tom from Midnight's Edge. I'm not going to reveal the movies. You will see them premiere. It will have a full premiere, so it's going to go uh, live technically. So there will be a chat. You could interact with each other, and there will be a normal episode, but we will interact with you because it's pre-recorded. Uh, I hope you enjoy those episodes. During the week, while I was, I'm on, on vacation, I'm literally working my ass off to make sure Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you will have a regular review episode. Hopefully, I'll finish them all this week. I don't know if I can. It's literally, I have to edit seven, seven videos in six days, I think. That's what's left. Hopefully, they'll all be there. And they'll all be appropriate. Let's just call it. Will that. you be putting them as premier so that you can interact no. with your viewers more? Okay. No. I know. I know. Won't have time to sit and be in the premiere as a chat member. Yeah, fair enough. Even yeah. even on the weekend shows, I will not have time. Yeah, because understood. I'm doing stuff. I literally have activities every single day while yeah. I'm in the states because I'm with kids. If it was just me and my wife, we would have been whatever i'm with kids always always on the move always yeah, doing yeah. some stuff especially Lots of room for activities more room for most activities. of the most of the videos that are coming out are coming out afternoon ish uh for the u.s they're evening for me but they're afternoon ish for the states afternoon i'm definitely not in the house i'm out yeah yeah out. so uh check it out if you like if not glad to see you here and uh, I guess we'll probably see you next week. See you around. And remember, guys, 
Hope is a good thing, maybe even the best of things, and no good thing ever dies. You're still here? It's over. Go home. 